What's up guys, I'm Rhett. Welcome back to Lawn Insider. As you could probably tell from the intro, I'm not going to be outside doing any yard work today. We're actually in the middle of what's being called a once in a generation weather event here in Texas. It got into the single digits a few days and we've had snow and ice and this is going on like the fifth or sixth day in a row to where we are going to be below freezing. So I'm actually trying to film this video through rolling power outages, so we'll see how this goes. But believe it or not, in a couple weeks, spring is going to be upon us at the beginning of March here in Texas that pretty much kicks off the lawn care season. So I wanted to make a video on how to take care of your Bermuda grass this season. All right, before we jump into the video, I want you guys to go ahead and leave me a comment saying what date or month your lawn season gets started. So what I've created for you guys is a Bermuda maintenance calendar, and it is going to cover everything that you're going to need to do in your lawn from the very start of spring to the very, very last thing you do before we head into winter at the end of the fall. So it is a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide of what you need to be doing to your yard, when you need to be doing it to your yard, and it's going to allow you to take a lot of the guesswork out of your lawn work this year. Now I am going to leave you guys a link to this below so you can get a copy of it for your phone or your desktop. I actually made it into a, a pretty high resolution JPEG picture so you should be able to zoom in, zoom out, do whatever you need and make sure you're getting a good view of everything you need to be seeing on this calendar. When you look at it, the first thing you're going to notice is that I put a key in there and the key includes beginner yard work, intermediate yard work, and then advanced yard work. And really, to have a nice lawn or an above average lawn, all you're going to have to do is the stuff that's listed in red on the calendar. But I know a lot of us are a little bit more fanatical about our yard work and we want to be pushed maybe into that intermediate level or that advanced level and really take your yard you know, up to the nth degree and those options are on there as well. Yellow is going to be your intermediate options of applications you can make, uh, products that you can use, practices, cultural practices that you can use just to really kick your yard up another notch. And then the green represents the advanced DIYers and those are the guys or gals who really want to have, you know, maybe the, the yard of the month. And they are really pushing their yard this year. And if you want to really get your yard looking its absolute best, then you are going to make your way all the way up to that green level on the maintenance calendar. Another thing that's really important, if you look at the top of the chart, it gives you average highs for all the months of the year. And that is so you can compare your climate and weather patterns to what mine are. So I'm in South Central Texas, and that's not going to look exactly what your weather looks like in Alabama or in Tennessee or in Georgia. So what you're going to do is compare and see how your average highs look for these months and you're going to stack them up to my average highs and let's say my average high in April is 80. Let's say that your average high in May is 80. Then you might want to slide this calendar one month back for your area because that's telling me that your climate is about a month behind my climate as far as when the temperature really warms up. But keep in mind that if you are starting a month after me, then more than likely you'll finish a month before me as well. So everything that I'm doing at the beginning of the year, I'll be doing earlier than you. And everything I'm doing at the end of the year, more than likely, I'll be doing later than you. So you are kind of getting a condensed version of this calendar. The moral of the story here is make sure you're paying attention to the temperatures at the top because that is what's going to guide you and give you the confidence to know that you're making the right applications at the right time of the year. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this calendar. We're going to try to look at it in two month sections. So we're going to start out with January and February. And you can see that there isn't much to do during those months other than put down your pre-emergent. I actually already made a video earlier in the year about pre-emergents. I suggest that you put down a pre-emergent with the active ingredient of prodiamine 
and that is going to basically save you from a lot of headaches from weeds that you might get in the future. It's not going to kill any weeds that you currently have in the lawn, but it is going to stop a lot of those weeds that might have popped up a few months from now from popping up and just save you a little time and a little money later because you're not going to have to buy those post-emergent products. If you've made it this far in the season and you haven't gotten your pre-emergent down, I actually think that you still have time in Texas considering we're going through an arctic blast right now. But I would suggest that the next opportunity you have to get that down, go ahead and get it down and then we will move on to our March and April portion of the calendar. March and April are very important months in the growing season because that's really when we kick things off. With Bermuda grass, you want to start off the season when you get really about a 50% green haze on your lawn. You want to go ahead and scalp your lawn. And that's going to be advice that's contrary to a lot of advice you hear, especially with other grass types. But Bermuda has absolutely zero problem growing back after being scalped. And what that scalping actually does is it allows for a faster green up. When I say scalp, I mean scalp as low as you can with the equipment that you have. So if you have a regular rotary mower, set that rotary mower on the lowest setting you have and mow the entire yard with it. You really are trying to get to dirt and it's going to look ugly for a few days, maybe a few weeks, but in the long run, your yard is going to green up faster than your neighbors. All right, you'll also see that I added an advanced dethatch option for the same time that you're scalping and that's because I actually scalp and dethatch at the same time and a dethatcher is a machine that is basically like a power rake that has these tines that go across the bottom and you can set it to different depths and it's just going to spin and it's just going to pull out anything that it can get a hold of. So when I dethatch I'm basically just trying to thin out the turf and get any of that dormant grass that I couldn't get when I was scalping out of the way because remember I'm just trying to get as close to dirt as I possibly can. You're also going to want to hit your lawn with its first granular fertilizer at this time and I suggest that you get down that fertilizer right after you scalp and make sure you water it in. You don't really want to do it before you scalp because then there's a really good chance that you're going to be picking up that fertilizer that you just laid down with the scalp because when you scalp you're going to want to remove all that grass that you just took off and you can't leave it sitting in the lawn because that's kind of defeating the purpose of why you're scalping in the first place. Another important part of the March April time frame is that you're going to put down your first insecticide in the lawn and again the insecticide is just more of a preventative hopefully hopefully you're not dealing with too many uh, insect issues that early in the season but it's going to prevent those problems from occurring in the future and a lot of those products that you put down have a pretty long residual effect to them to where they're going to last you at least a month or two let's go ahead and talk about a few of the treatments that I have on here that can be applied at any time throughout the season because I'm probably not going to specifically mention them on any of my little two month subsections that we talk about and those are going to be liquid fertilizers so liquid fertilizers are usually going to be used as more of a supplement to your granular fertilizer it's really difficult to put enough nutrients in a liquid to have it be your primary food source for your lawn. That's why it's usually more of a secondary option and it's safe to apply those at any time throughout the growing season. Same thing with herbicides. So whenever you see weeds in your lawn, I've already made a video about the weed killers that I use. I use Celsius herbicide and I use Sedgehammer herbicide and whenever I see weeds I treat those weeds because those two products don't have temperature restrictions so if I see a problem I'm gonna try to take care of that problem and those weed killers can be used at any time throughout the season another treatment you'll see on there is the humic acid and humic acid is one of the products I list as an intermediate level product and that's because you do not need to apply humic acid to have a nice lawn but it does make your lawn nicer again it takes it to that next step and what humic acid does is it improves your soil and it allows for a better uptake from your root system so it really allows your roots to be more efficient and they are going to be able to obtain more of the nutrients from your soil 
than they would have without that humic acid application. And then the last treatment that is listed across the entire growing season is just making sure you're watering your lawn. Again, you want to get down one inch of water in your lawn per week. There might be times in the summer if you're seeing heat stress that you want to up your water input just a little bit, but a very good rule of thumb is one inch per week and you should be good to go. Moving on to the May and June section of the calendar, you'll see core aerate listed there. You actually do have a few options on how you can core aerate. There are manual handheld core aerators, but those take a while and you definitely break a sweat. Probably the most popular option is to rent a machine from a place like Home Depot. Maybe go half and half with your neighbor that day, something like that. But when we core aerate, we are punching holes into the ground and we are pulling out plugs. And those holes are opening up the canopy of your grass and allowing water and nutrients to more easily reach the root zone and it is loosening up some of that compaction that you might get in your lawn especially if you have a clay lawn like I do. When you air it you will leave plugs on the lawn really it's up to you whether or not you remove those plugs or if you keep the plugs. I usually aerate right before I top dress so I don't really worry about the plugs because I'm not going to be able to mow for a while anyway but if you are really antsy to mow right after you aerate you can run your mower over those plugs and they'll kind of chop them up into little bits and eventually they will break down back into the soil. Then we have another advanced treatment option listed as the top dress. So when you're top dressing your lawn you're basically ordering sand from a local landscape supply company. A good rule of thumb is you usually want to go for about one yard of sand per thousand square feet of lawn that you have and make sure you're ordering mason sand because you don't want any pebbles or rocks in there to hit your blade especially if you have a real mower like me that can do some damage on the lawn mower but you're going to get this sand and you're using it to flatten your yard so you're not necessarily trying to make it perfectly level you want to keep the grade that is naturally in your yard because those grades are important for water to run off your yard and your yard not to flood but you want the grade that you have to be flat as possible so if you do have any dips in there uh, you want to fill those dips in with sand because that's going to prevent a lot of the scalping that can happen in your lawn and it's just going to make for a better looking mow and the more you top dress the flatter your yard is going to be I've actually top dressed twice and I'm going to top dress this year again and my yard is looking flatter and flatter each time. When you top dress you want to make sure that it is pretty hot outside because you want that Bermuda grass actively growing. You can smother it with sand trust me my mine was under several inches of sand last time I leveled and if it is warm the grass will grow through it. Just make sure that you're not top dressing you know in the middle of winter or in the very very end of fall or anything like that. Make sure you're top dressing when that Bermuda grass is actively growing and when it is hot outside. You also want to put down a grub treatment in May. I don't know if you guys knew this but grubs are actually June bug babies and the June bugs come and they lay their eggs in your lawn and then those grubs eventually hatch and grubs themselves like to eat the roots of your grass and that's why you get weak spots in your grass sometimes. So to prevent that grub damage you want to put down some sort of grub product in May. I'm going to make a grub video coming up this season. I actually use a liquid product but there is a granular option at all the local big box stores. Grub X by Scott's you can go ahead and put that down and that should prevent you from having any grub damage later on in the season. It's also a good idea this time of year to put down a fungal treatment. Again, I know I've said this several times, but this is a preventative treatment. So you're going to put down your fungal preventative treatment and hopefully you won't face any fungal issues later on in the season. It is a lot cheaper to prevent these things from happening than it is to treat them once they've already occurred. So make sure that you are on top of things and get down a fungal treatment. You're going to continue making your granular fertilizer applications throughout the season. Usually it's around every two months or so. 
I'm personally going to spoon feed my lawn this year, so I will be giving it smaller doses more frequently, but it's definitely okay just to go by whatever it suggests to put down on the back of your bag, and you are never going to hurt your lawn that way. When we move on to July and August, there's really only one new treatment that shows up on the calendar, and that is a advanced option, the PGR, Plant Growth Regulator. And what Plant Growth Regulator does is it slows down the vertical growth of your grass. And if that sounds too good to be true, it's actually not. There is a product out there that can keep your grass healthy, but also prevent its vertical growth, or at least stunt its vertical growth. And that is a Plant Growth Regulator. I use a product called Teenex. It is not an inexpensive product, but when I'm having to mow every other day in the summer at the height of cut that I try to maintain, Teenex or Plant Growth Regulator is really a lifesaver because it allows me to cut maybe every four or five days instead of every other day. And it just takes a lot of wear and tear off of your body, but also off of your mower as well. So PGR, if you want to look into that, Plant Growth Regulator is a really good advanced option. If you are really tired of having to mow so often and you're really finding it's hard to keep up with that one-third rule, not trying to cut off one-third of the blade, then you might want to look into a Plant Growth Regulator. All right, so I'm actually going to lump September, October, and November into their own group at the end here. And the reason for that is because that is typically going to be the end of our growing season somewhere in that window there and there are two things that we want to think about while our Bermuda is headed into dormancy number one is that we need to put down our fall pre-emergent and it can be the same pre-emergent product that you use in the spring in fact that's what I recommend put down some more prodiamine and you can also start thinking about if you want to overseed with ryegrass for the winter. Bermuda goes dormant, okay? So over the winter, Bermuda is going to go dormant. It's going to turn brown. If you want a green lawn throughout the year, you can overseed with ryegrass. However, it will cause your Bermuda to come back a little bit thinner and a little bit later next year. So there is some give and take with that option, but a ryegrass overseed done right looks great. Uh, it's just going to give you a little extra work when it comes to getting your Bermuda back to full strength next spring. Okay, and we made it to December, and you can see that December does not have any active treatments listed. Now, if you do have a ryegrass overseed that you did, then you're going to have to obviously maintain that grass. But if you just have dormant Bermuda, then really there's not much to do when that Bermuda is dormant except wait for it to turn green again and wait for the next season. All right, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up right there. Remember, I am leaving the link to this calendar underneath the video. Please save a copy for yourself. Share a copy with your friends. If you like the video, leave me a like. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the comments below. If you're liking the content so far, please, please, please subscribe. I hope to see you guys again next week. Lawn Insider, out.